Welcome back. We are here with our friend Jim Quick, author of Limitless. Uh, he has courses. He's been um, hosted Super Hero You conferences, which Hannah and I have spoken at. You know, he's just recognized as one of the world experts on memory and learning and his new book is just fantastic i hope all of you get it go to limitlessbook.com um jim in this episode we're going to really talk about the model that you've been teaching from can you share it with the brain warriors way audience absolutely thank you for having me on here and so the limitless model is a three-part framework for not only learning anything faster but also unlocking human potential And so I want to make this interactive. I want everyone to think about who's listening one area of your life where you feel like you're being held back, where you feel like there are limits, where you're not making progress. It could be in a relationship. It could be in your finances. It could be in your impact. It could be in your personal health and vitality, or it could be in your learning. Maybe you feel limited in your memory. You feel limited in your ability to read and and focus. Where do you feel like you're in a box? And that box is three-dimensional, right, by definition. And the three dimensions or the three forces that keep you in that box are the three elements of this framework. So I want everyone to grab a piece of paper, and I want you to draw three circles and three circles. And if you can't draw it out, just if you can't draw right now, just imagine in your mind. I want you to make these three circles intersecting, kind of like the... um, the symbol for the Olympics, or maybe Mickey Mouse, two ears that cross over and then a face. So three intersecting circles, they call it a Venn diagram. And so a Venn diagram, these are the three forces that you must, that what they keep you stuck. And it's also the same three forces that will liberate you and out of this box. So there's three M's. The last M is going to be your methods. And that's what this book initially was, a book on speed reading, memory enhancement, learning languages and everything. And it still is. But I realized that people, not a lot of people know what to do, but they don't do what they know because common sense is not common practice. So I said, what are the elements that are missing after teaching this for 28 years, field testing? And I realized there are two M's that need to come before that. And so the first M is your mindset. And your mindset are your set of assumptions and attitudes about something. It could be your attitudes, assumptions about how the world works, attitudes, assumptions about what's going on, because that meaning has a lot of power, right? Your attitudes, assumptions about health, your attitudes, assumptions about yourself. So what would fall in this circle of mindset are things like what you believe is possible. That would be part of your mindset. Also, what you believe you're capable of would be part of your mindset. So you could believe something is possible, but you might not believe you're capable of it. Right. Or also what could be in this circle are things like what you believe you deserve. So I could go straight to the third M methods and teach somebody how to remember people's names. But if their mindset is I'm, I'm not smart, I have a horrible memory, I'm too old and they're still going to be stuck in that box. Right. And so that belief is not going to allow that behavior to, to really express itself. And so that's your mindset. The second M that's adjacent to it is motivation. Motivation, meaning that, and a lot of things, I talk in mindset about the seven lies to learning, L-I-E, limited idea entertained. You know, lies that we globally generally accept, but are actually not true. And I help people to go through a process of unlimiting. Unlimiting is the active removal of limits in your mindset, motivation, and the methods. So going back to motivation, a lot of people feel like motivation is something that just comes and goes. It's something that people feel like they have to enjoy working out to be motivated to do it. They have to, they have, and here's the real the truth around it. A lot of people say they're motivated, but they're not really because the evidence that you're motivated is not what you say. It's not even what you feel. It's whether you're doing that action consistently, whether you're exercising consistently, you know, whether you're eating that food or reading each day or whatever you're motiv- you want to be motivated to do. So the formula for sustainable motivation, because if people watch the Limitless, you know, for the namesake, that movie with Bradley Cooper and Robert yeah. De Niro, you know, it's, he takes the pill and all of a sudden he has this incredible memory. He's learning languages. He wrote his book in like a week and he has this incredible focus concentration and he has a surge of motivation. But when that pill wears off 24 hours yeah. later, everything goes back down to zero, including his motivation. And a lot of people get excited about something, you know, at an event or something. And they, they're like, I'm going to change. I'm going to do X, Y, Z. And the next day happens, no X, Y, Z. So here's the formula I found for sustainable motivation. And, um, and actually, we should probably do a, a dedicated episode to this. Let's do a dedicated after this. And the last, and so motivation for me is about sustainable drive. 
that you could be still, you could have the mindset that everything is limitless as possible. And you can have the great methods for marketing or for health or for learning. But if you're not motivated, you're still going to be stuck in that box. Now, here's the magic and the aha. Um, where mindset crosses over with motivation, mindset and motivation, you have inspiration. Meaning there are experts on mindset. There's a great book called Mindset by Carol Dweck. There are experts on motivation. Uh, there are great books, Motivation and Manifesto from, from you know, Brendan Burchard, or um, there are motivational speakers. Where they cross over, you have the first I, three I's. The first I is inspiration. You have inspirational speakers. You have inspirational books. You have inspirational movies. And what do they do? They kind of change your mindset about what's possible, and they give you a little energy and motivation, right? Um, but you don't know what to apply that inspiration to because you don't have the methods. You're inspired, but you don't have any instruction. Where mindset crosses over with methods where you have, you believe it's possible in your mind and you even know what to do in your mind, it's ideation. That's the second I, ideation, right? It just stays an idea because you lack the motivation to do anything with it. And finally, where motivation crosses over with methods, you have the sustainable tribe and you have the energy and you know what to do, that's implementation. And that's wonderful, right? Implementation, that's the third I, yet you could still be stuck in that box because you're only going to be able to implement to the degree your mindset allows, to what you believe is possible, to what you believe you're capable of, to what you believe you deserve, because all behavior is belief driven. Now, the, the point that I want everyone to get to is that fourth I, which is dead center in the middle, all right, where all three M's overlap or all three I's overlap, you have the fourth I, which is integration 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 like integer or integral it means you're whole and integration means it's just who you are and that's the limitless state that we want people in now this framework i mentioned is a framework for accelerated learning because if you're not learning to the degree you feel like you could focus to remember to be able to read or think or study you could it gives you it takes a judgment out you know, you could be kind to yourself again, meaning that it, you could go and analyze it through this lens and saying, where is my limitation here? Is it in my mindset? Do I not believe this is possible? Do I not believe I'm capable of it? Do I not believe I deserve it? And then you could address it from there. Or you could go into your motivation. Do I not have purpose around this? Do I not feel reasons for doing this? Do I not have energy to be able to complete these things? You know, I have not broken it down into the tiny, small habits. Or it could be your methodology. Maybe your mindset and your motivation is there, but maybe you're using old methods for, uh, for being healthy, old methods for starting a business, old methods for reading or remembering or for studying. And so it takes a judgment on it so you could address the area where you feel limited because really limitless is about redrawing the borders and boundaries of what's possible, right? To really recognize these constraints and then unlimit yourself. And then that's where everything flows from. It also becomes a framework for everybody who's here is to role model other people. Because if somebody's successful in an area, I believe genius leaves clues. And you can say, okay, what's their mindset? What do they believe? You know, what do they, what, what do they believe they're capable of? What do they believe they deserve? What, are the, what is their purpose? You know, what are they doing for energy, sustainable drive? How, what are the small, simple steps that they're taking? Or what are the methodologies, the processes that they're doing? So mindset is all about possibility. And, and motivation is all about purpose and methodology is all about the actual process because I believe there's always a method behind what looks like that's magic for other people. So my, my message really for everybody is do not downgrade your dreams to meet this current situation. That's what everyone's doing. Like They're downgrading their dreams to meet this current situation. I'm saying upgrade your mindset, your motivation, and your methods to be able to meet your dreams. I love that. So we're going to talk about motivation in the last episode. Um, in the last minute, do you have any tips on the method? Um, okay. And yes, you know, we want people to go to limitlessbook.com, but share just one or two things on the method that can be helpful to people. Absolutely. So one of the things that we could do for helping people to read more, and I think it's a great opportunity to put your home to be able to read, because I think leaders are readers. Reading is to your mind, but exercise is to your, to your body. And so one of the methods in terms of reading, most people read slow, so they're not doing it. So a lot of people buy books and they sit on your shelf and they become shelf help, not self help, because buying <laughs> a book is a different skill set than reading the book. And if, if people don't enjoy reading because they're not good at it. So what will help level up your reading is using a visual pacer. So meaning without skipping words, 
using a visual pacer like your finger, a highlighter, a pen, a pencil to underline the words because it helps you to direct your focus. So as opposed to your attention being pulled apart, it's pulling, pulled, pulled through the information that you need to read. It can be a mouse on a computer. Without skipping any words, what people will find, if they test themselves, they'll actually read 25 to 50% faster mm. with better focus because if it, it actually mitigates this process of back skipping and regressing. Mm. And, um, and that helps you. And also there's a, there's a, there's a, uh, there's certain senses work very closely together, like your sense of smell and taste. Like a lot of people love the taste of peaches, but they're not actually tasting a peach. They're smelling the peach, but mm. their sense of smell and taste are so closely linked. Their mind doesn't discern the difference unless you're sick and you can't smell anything out of your nose. What does food taste like? A lot of food tastes bland, just as your sense of sight and taste are closely linked. So is your sense of touch and your sense of sight. So when people use their finger while they read, they literally say they, they feel more in touch with their reading. Yeah. In fact, when people lose their sense of sight, how do they read? They use Braille, right? Their sense of touch. And that helps them to be able to learn better. So, so I would encourage people when they're reading, you, you know, you, the two of you, you have so many books together, like reading your books, use your finger to underline and test yourself. Read for 60 seconds, count the number of lines you just read, and then use your finger while you read and count the number of lines you read in 60 seconds. And that line, wow. that second number will be a 25, 50% lift. Wow. Uh, which is, which is astonishing. That's so that cool. Would, yeah. I think reading is so important nowadays that people schedule 10, 15. Yeah, that's something I can teach the kids really easily. Very much so. Awesome. All right. When we come back, maybe another tip or two with method, because I find that so fascinating. Yeah, really cool. And we're also going to talk about motivation. Uh, Limitless book. Com. We're here with our friend, Jim Quick. Stay with us. If you're enjoying the Brain Warriors Way podcast, please don't forget to subscribe so you'll always know when there's a new episode. And while you're at it, feel free to give us a review or five-star rating as that helps others find the podcast. If you're considering coming to Amen Clinics or trying some of the brain healthy supplements from BrainMD, you can use the code PODCAST10 to get a 10% discount on a full evaluation at amenclinics.com or a 10% discount on all supplements at brainmdhealth.com. For more information, give us a call at 855-978-1363.